In my 20 plus years of training women, I never imagined that we would come to a point in history where we're actually afraid to claim the honor of being a woman. In 2022, as we all know, the definition of being a woman was all of a sudden not clear. And, you know, I really kind of pause and took a step back and <clears throat> didn't want to enter into the conversation. Yes, I'm the founder of the Women's School. And yes, I've trained thousands of women. And yes, I'm passionate about being a woman. But in some ways, I really had to reflect on how did we come to this point in history where <clears throat> being a woman is now something that feels like a threat. And what I mean by that, I think there's a lot of us women out there who want to take a stand and say, I, I don't want to go back a hundred years where I, my rights, my value, and who I am as a woman was not seen or heard. And I think we are sort of seeing a time in history where there's a lot of attack um, on what it means to be a woman that so many women are afraid to actually speak up and say, listen, I just want my honor to be protected and valued as a human being and as a woman. And it doesn't mean <clears throat> that I don't value people who have different sexual orientation. It doesn't also mean that I don't respect people where they are and in their journey of understanding who they are as a human being and their own sexuality. I think we can hold space for both. I think that I should not feel afraid of the mockery or the controversy or the criticism by standing up for what I believe is my privilege. What I believe is my honor, which is that I was born a woman. And with that comes a gift and a responsibility and an honor that I need to defend, protect, and revere. Now, it also means that I can hold space for people that are struggling with their sexuality or perhaps have a different belief in how, you know, how they see themselves as a woman without having to be afraid of my value as a woman. I think that <clears throat> we have sort of this polarizing extreme voice where we're mocking people who are going through with sexuality or we're silent about the fact that we need to define what it means to be a woman because now it's vulnerable. And I think that we, I think we're not asking the right question. I think that the right question is that how we, how do we help people discover their own sexuality? How do we help people discover that their value is unconditional? How do we help people develop a mindset that doesn't program them to think that their worth is conditioned to anything external? How do we create a culture where we can have a conversation with people that have different sexual orientation, different beliefs, different, you know, experience and not judge them, but rather be curious about how they got there and maybe we can find creative solution to help each other, right? And defend each other on maybe the attacks on our value. And I know that this sort of could be controversial, but I felt the need to say, you know what? If I'm honest with myself, I am upset about the fact that I can't take a stand that I am a woman, 
without fear that people are going to silence, mock, or cancel me. And that fear is real because that's what's happening. And especially if you're somebody who has worked decades to protect and preserve women, to teach them to live a life of interior freedom, to give them hope, to train them with a the mindset and the skill set so the world doesn't devalue them. I've laid down my life to train women. This is my life's work. This is my passion. And all of a sudden, I am in this place where, oh, January, you have to be careful. You have to be careful that, you know, you're not proclaiming what a woman is or, you know, you're not creating controversy. And I just feel like there's women out there that are listening that also feel the same way as I am and saying, I don't want to be. I don't want the fact that I'm a woman be a place of fear. That my ability to respect everyone and their value should include my ability to respect and honor my value as a woman. And I think that there's a lot of things that we can learn from if we have honest conversations with people that are have opposing belief. And I think right now there's a lot of mockery that's happening and not productive conversation and sort of a lot of blaming and shaming and right and left and this. And, and I just think that we are causing more division than we are causing ability to find our common ground. And what I'd love to invite people is to have honest conversation. How are we taught to discover the gift of our sexuality? Um, some of you might be sitting here and say, Junior, it's not more complicated. You know, uh, how do you define a woman? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think I can define. It is not for me to define what a woman is. I think it's been defined for me by the very nature of our biological makeup. We are either born male or female with an XX chromosome and a man. Now, some of you might be sitting here and say, well, you can't just define it biologically because some women and some men are intersex. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you because I think that's not the right, um, I would say, uh, the right strategy. I, I think that I don't fully understand why some men and women are born sort of as intersex or why that's happened. That's not my point. My point is that as we figure out the dynamics of our culture, as we figure out that, you know, um, how to respect people and how they discover their sexuality and equip them with the right mindset and skills that they need to actually discover who they truly are, I don't want to have to be afraid to be a woman. I don't want my voice taken away from me. I don't want to look up my child in the eye and say, being a woman is at risk. I don't want to go back in time. I want to stand up and say it is an honor and a privilege to be a woman. I want to stand up and say, I value men. And I value people who have different sexuality, that my ability to stand up for what I truly believe is my right as a woman doesn't mean I am condemning those that don't have the same experience or belief as I am. I can hold space in kindness and in charity to say, I, I see you and I value you and I don't know your story and I don't know what you've been through and I'm sure what you're going through is not easy. And at the same time, I don't have to dishonor the very privilege of being a woman. I think it's time that we stand our ground and we hold space for the beauty and the reverence and the gift and the honor of what it means to be a woman without fear, 
without shame, without feeling as though we are being belittled and afraid to speak our voice that is true to who we are because of a mob of few people that are out to get us and degrade us. Yes, there might be a few of you that are maybe unhappy and maybe with who you are that it doesn't matter if it's me or somebody else. There's something to attack. But I think the majority of the human heart actually believes in respecting the human person, in respecting the woman, in respecting the man. And that's what I want to, to take a claim here as the founder of the woman's school that I value every one of you who share different experience, who um, have different sexuality and genders. And I also value myself. And I'm fighting for all the women out there who feel silenced, who feel afraid, who feel threatened to claim their value as a woman and speak up with voice of gratitude and enthusiasm that it is truly a gift to be a woman simply because we're afraid to define what it means to be a woman. You don't have to like me. I love this. This is from Chris Crow and I can thank you. Some people like me and some people don't. That's okay. Because I like me. Some people love me and some people hate me. And that's okay. Because I love me. I learned that from Chris. So thank you, Chris. And it took me a while to find the courage to speak what I believe is deep within my heart. And the reason why I can no longer be silent is because I don't want other women to be silent. That courage breeds courage. And that if I can invite you to hold space for people who have different sexual beliefs as you, while also honoring your own value as a woman, then we can begin a conversation that builds greater unity and not greater division in our world. And that's my invitation to all of you who are listening, some of you that might not like me, I honor you. <laughs> and some of you that are listening to me, that might be, I've gone through so much as a trans um, that your story is valuable and that whatever story that you have in your narrative, that your value never changes. Nothing, nothing changes our value. We are all valuable simply because we are human and we are alive in this world. And I want to celebrate you in spite perhaps that there could be different opinions or that you might not like what I have to say. I just ask that we remain respectful in the way we communicate, see people, and talk about people. Because mocking and making fun of people hurts more people than we probably know in the silence of their heart. So to all of my listeners out there, I celebrate you to all of you men out there who are honoring women. I value you. I thank you. And I ask you to join me in this movement of bringing honor and value back to what it means to be a woman, which inevitably brings back the value of what it means to be a man. I look forward to deeper conversations about how we can, as a culture, 
you know, navigate a lot of the confusion that's happening and help our young minds and young adults discover their unconditional worth, discover their sexuality in a way that honors their value as a human being.